everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ask Me Anything. A big thank you to House Party for sponsoring this episode. If you don't know, House Party is a really awesome app that allows up to eight people to chat face to face. So even though we're all self-isolating, we are staying in touch with House Party. You can do a lot of cool things like play games. Oh, um, he was in Twilight, um, not uh, other dude. Uh, he was also in Shark Boy and Jacob. I know who you're talking, I don't know his name. If you don't have it, make sure to download it. There is a link in the description below. And uh, without further ado, here's Ask Me Anything. When people hear about it, what kind of stereotypes do people automatically think of? That I'm a thief, that I was being selfish, that if I loved my children, I wouldn't have done what I did. Some topics are hard to approach. The U.S. locks more people up than any other country. Either the subjects are inaccessible or people are uncomfortable discussing them. So we found those subjects in person, rented a space in Los Angeles, and invited our audience and strangers to come in and ask them anything. Hi, my name's Michelle, and I'm an ex-offender. I'm here to answer questions on the topic. Hey, my name is Eric. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you, Eric. I'm Michelle, and it's great to meet you. It's great to meet you. <laughs> Even though I can't see you. Hello, hello. <laughs> what was your crime? White collar. My situation was, you know, writing checks. I was involved in an embezzlement case. Because of our system, back taxes and tax fraud and all these other titles came with it. What led you to do what you did? You know, when it started, it actually was more of a looking out for my kids and my family, mm -hmm. give them things that I felt they needed. And looking back, I see that they didn't need it and I caused more harm. With a lot of the incarcerated youth I work with, uh, some of them say, if I could have gotten away with this, yeah, I totally would have done it again, but I got caught. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that's something that you might have told yourself five years ago? I want to say no, because I think it's the right thing to say. However, if I wouldn't have got caught, I probably would have continued to keep doing it. <laughs> but for the most part, I'm glad that I got caught and I never want to go back to it again. What did you do for fun in prison? I don't know if I really did anything for fun, but I sure did learn a lot of things. I learned how to thread my eyebrows with the string from new tampons. <laughs> I learned how to cook some really nice dinners with trash bags and uh, boiling water. Have you seen Orange is the New Black? No, what is that? I, it's a show about women in prison and what you're describing. There's like some portions where they do the exact same thing. Yes, I have watched the show and I've, oh. been, I've, been, <laughs> I've binge watched it, okay? I get asked quite a bit, so I, you know, I will answer to the fact that there are very um, similar traits the connection and relationship with you have with the women in there. You know, I had some really good friends in there, mm -hmm. but there's also a lot of Hollywood hype to it that it's not like that. Uh, how long were you in prison for? Nearly six years. I was sentenced to 10 years and four months and I earned some time off my sentence for good behavior. If you were in the jury for your case, would you have given yourself the same sentence, a lesser sentence, or a longer sentence, and if you can justify why? You know, in some ways, I wanna say that it was a bit much, especially when the very same day I was sentenced, somebody else was sentenced mm -hmm. for a sex crime on a minor and got less time than me. <laughs> I remember reading that in the newspaper and just being fat, you just totally taken back, you know, like, where's the fairness in this? But with that, I will also say that there's so many things that I did do that I didn't get caught for, mm -hmm. that the things I got blamed for that I didn't do, I had to just accept. What was the life like in the prison? It was frightful. I saw things that I thought only happened in movies. <laughs> you know, my experience was um, 
added trauma, but it also is where a strength in me came that I would have never gotten anywhere else. Was there a specific um, breaking point? Yeah, it's the combination, you know, first being arrested, then being in county jail for a year and a half. And in jail, you only get enclosed visits, no physical contact. So for 18 months, I wasn't able to touch my children or hug them or have any connection with them whatsoever, except words through a glass window. And if there was one thing you could change about prison in general, what would that be? The way that women are treated in there and the way they're looked at. After a visit with your children, that you're being nurturing and loving, you have to go in a room and be strip searched. Mm -hmm. And you have to bend over and you have to cough and you have to just be humiliated mm -hmm. after you were just hugging and nurturing your children. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking minutes, like there's no time to shake off what you just were and transform into the prisoner, you know? No, of course, it's dehumanizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How have you recovered or has it been hard for you mentally? Yeah, um, actually it's been the, the biggest struggle of being previously incarcerated is um, coming home and transitioning back into being um, a human being, um, back to, into being a mother to a wife. It's quite challenging and I've been home almost nine years and I still battle you know, the shame and the guilt from it, but I've also take great pride in the strides that I have made to overcome some of it. What is some advice for people thinking of committing a crime? Well, obviously, I want to say don't do it. And I don't mean that lightheartedly. Like, seriously, it is just... If I would have known the severity of my consequences, if I would have seen the impact that it was going to have on other people's lives, especially my family, I would really just stop and encourage that person to think things through, and if you can't imagine what it's going to be like, let me introduce you to some friends who can. Is there something you would tell your kids? The one thing that I have said that I feel like I always want to keep saying over and over is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I hurt you. I'm sorry that I caused the pain that I caused you. As a child and as someone with parents who make mistakes, maybe not as large as yours. I do want to say that kids have this room for forgiveness that is so much larger only to their parents. And I truly believe that your kids will come to accept and love you even more than they did before. I believe that there is, of course, room for growth and room for change. And I believe that you will get to a point where you and your family can come together. Thank you. Thank you. And I, uh... Yeah, you guys can help. <laughs> nice seeing you. Thank you nice so much you. For, yeah, you. for everything. Yeah, it was awesome talking to you. Thanks for watching another episode of Asking Anything. And thank you to Epic Games for sponsoring this episode, the people behind House Party. Check it out. It's a free app. You can chat with up to eight people. Let's, let's just do this. Let's, Jason Lee. Let's get Jason on here. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Boom! Hello. Oh, the Jason. power of house party. You can chat with your friends. You can play games. We got heads up, trivia, chips and guac, quick draw. We are all enjoying it and using it at Jubilee during our time in self-isolation. So make sure to check it out. Are we filming an outro right now? Yeah, we're filming an outro. <laughs> this is how we do it. This is how we do it. <laughs> Amazing. Make sure you like and subscribe and check out house party. Thanks for watching. See ya. Let's play chips and guac. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs>